This is uh, Assemblies of God Better Seminary. My name is uh, A.K. Wisdom C. Today I'll be handling a topic in chemistry called uh, sulfur. Sulfur. So without wasting our time, let's look at the study focus or lesson focus. We are going to consider five things in our lesson focus. The first one is sulfur as an element. The second one is allotropes of sulfur. The third one is properties of rhombic and monoclinic sulfur. Then we will consider chemical properties of sulfur. And lastly, we will look at the uses of sulfur. So let's start with the first one, sulfur as an element. You know, sulfur makes up about 0.1% of the earth crust. We mean when you check the earth crust, 0.1% of it is sulfur. And this sulfur is yellow in color. It's a non-metal and the second member in group 6 element of the periodic table it occurs freely in nature and uh, if you go to places like america poland japan and new zealand you will see free deposits of uh, sulfur in those places and uh, sulfur can also occur in a combined state uh, like uh, in form of sulfides of iron, sulfides of zinc, sulfides of lead, copper, and mercury, and uh, can also appear in the form of the triosulfate, sea salt of calcium, magnesium, and uh, barium. So, in food material like protein, we have traces of sulfur. Also, we can have traces of sulfur in plants and animals. So, considering the allotropes of sulfur, uh, first and foremost, let's talk about what allotrope, allotropy is. So, allotropy is the ability of an element to exist in two or more different forms in the same physical state. So the ability which a, 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 an element has to exist in more than two forms, two different forms in the same physical state, we say is allotropy. And uh, for sulfur, sulfur has uh, the main allotropes as uh, one, rhombic sulfur, which can be called alpha sulfur. We also have a monoclinic, monoclinic sulfur, which is called beta sulfur. We have amorphous sulfur, which can be called delta sulfur. Then the last one is plastic uh, sulfur. These are the allotropes of uh, sulfur. So considering the first one, let's start with it, the rhombic sulfur. So rhombic sulfur, uh, can be prepared by allowing a saturated solution of sulfur in carbon 4 sulfide to evaporate slowly and the, crist the crystals will gradually be deposited. What we are saying here is that if you get a saturated uh, solution of sulfur, introduce it in carbon 4 sulfide. A crystal will form which deposits as your rhombic sulfur. So this rhombic sulfur has uh, the following properties. It has the following properties. Number one is that it is very stable at a temperature below 96 degrees centigrade and uh, is a crystalline form of uh, allotropes of sulfur and has a anotahedral shape 
then we also see the number three as uh, is a, is very soluble in carbon four sulfide and uh, has a density of 2.06 gram per cm cube and uh, a melting point of uh, 113 degree centigrade this uh, rhombic sulfur is made up of uh, eight sulfur molecules with a ring of eight sulfur atom so these are the properties of uh, rhombic sulfur now for monoclinic sulfur this one is obtained by melting sulfur in a small crucible and allowing it to cool slowly then after cooling what do you do a few minutes later a crust will form that crust will form in a form on the surface of the crucible if you pierce that crust and remove the crust or pour it out what will follow is a deposit of long transparent needle-like crystals of monoclinic and sulfur we are trying to say here that for you to produce a monoclinic sulfur you melt the sulfur in a simple or small crucible then after melting it you notice melting and allowing it to cool you notice that uh, a tiny crust will be formed if you puncture that crust and pour it out you will now see a deposit of long transparent needle-like crystals of monoclinic sulfur so considering the properties of uh, monoclinic sulfur the first one is that this uh, uh, allotrope of sulfur is uh, stable between the temperatures of uh, 96 degrees centigrade and 119 degrees centigrade so it contains sulfur eight molecules and uh, it is also a crystalline allotrope of carbon uh, sulfur with uh, a sh the shape here is needle like needle like unlike rhombic that is octahedra then the density of uh, monoclinic sulfur is uh, 1.96 grams cm cube while its melting point is 119 degree centigrade now let's uh, consider generally the difference between rhombic and monoclinic uh, sulfur the difference between rhombic and monoclinic uh, sulfur you, you see we have properties we have rhombic sulfur and we have monoclinic uh, sulfur so under the properties the first one we are going to consider is a color rhombic sulfur is bright yellow in color while monoclinic sulfur is amber in color then the shape of rhombic sulfur is octahedra while that of the monoclinic is needle like and um, the density of rhombic sulfur is 2.06 while the density of monoclinic sulfur is 1.96 the, the melting point of uh, rhombic sulfur is 113 degrees centigrade why the monoclinic sulfur has a, a melting point of 119 degree centigrade then in terms of their stability uh, rhombic sulfur is stable below 96 degree centigrade why monoclinic sulfur is stable between the temperature range of 96 degree centigrade to 119 degree centigrade then their transmission of light uh, rhombic sulfur is translucent while monoclinic sulfur is uh, transparent so now considering amorphous sulfur being one of the allotropes of sulfur the amorphous sulfur how do we prepare it it is prepared as a pale yellow deposit when a saturated solution of hydrogen sulfide is exposed to air so if you expose hydrogen sulfide to air um, 
with uh, time you will see a pale yellow deposit and when that pale yellow deposit is formed what you finally got is what we call amorphous uh, sulfur remember that uh, hydrogen sulfide is one of the compounds of uh, sulfur if you look at this equation you will notice that hydrogen sulfide reacting with oxygen that is being exposed to air will now give us water and uh, sulfide another way to prepare amorphous sulfur uh, is by the action of dilute hydrochloric acid on a triosotiosulfate 6 solution if you react hcl with uh, triosotiosulfate 6 solution you will get the product like sodium chloride water sulfide and uh, so2 which is a uh, sulfur for ozone so generally uh, amorphous sulfur has no regular crystalline shape that is to say it's not a, a crystalline allotrope of sulfur uh, it is in form of a white powder and is amorphous in shape being amorphous in shape means that it doesn't have shape it is shapeless so let's consider plastic uh, sulfur that's the last uh, uh, number the last uh, allotropes of what sulfur so this is prepared by heating yellow sulfur in a test tube and pouring the molten sulfur in a thin continuous stream into cold water if you heat a yellow sulfur in a test tube and then pour a molten sulfur in a thin continuous stream into cold water what you will get at last is what we call plastic uh, sulfur now for the properties of a plastic sulfur the plastic sulfur one of the properties is uh, is soft and uh, elas uh, elastic and uh, does not dissolve in carbon 4 sulfide it doesn't dissolve in carbon 4 sulfide so if you stand it if you allow it to stand uh, it loses its plasticity and reverts to rhombic sulfur when you allow it to stand the its plasticity will be lost and it will change to rhombic uh, sulfur that's one of the disadvantage number three is that it is unstable and not considered as the true allotrope of what sulfur is very unstable that is to say if you allow it to stay for a long time it can change to another thing altogether now we have physical properties of uh, sulfur the physical properties of sulfur number one is that sulfur is a yellow liquid is a yellow liquid when you look at it it's yellow in color and uh, it exists in two forms we have amorphous sulfur and we have crystalline sulfur so the crystalline sulfur like the rhombic sulfur and monoclinic uh, sulfur so these ones are under crystalline but we also have amorphous and plastic wood sulfur so these ones are not that what they don't have shape they are shapeless so number three it is insoluble in water but soluble in carbon 4 sulfide and methyl benzene so if you add sulfur in methyl benzene or carbon 4 sulfide it will dissolve it will melt and uh, the melting point of uh, sulfur is 119 degree centigrade while its boiling point is 444 degree centigrade so the density is dependent on the type of allotrope that is being considered if you check the table we have above you will discover that all of them have their different uh, densities especially the rhombic sulfur and the molecular uh, sulfur then number six is that it is a bare a bad conductor of heat and electricity that is to say it doesn't conduct towards electricity well 
so if you want it to conduct electricity for you um, you will not get a better result then let's consider the chemical properties of sulfur number one the one of the chemical properties of sulfur is that sulfur combines directly with other words elements and uh, at least with metals when it combines with metal like uh, zinc you can see from the equation it will form zinc sulfide and if it combines with iron it will form iron 2 sulfide then when it combines with oxygen uh, it will burn with the oxygen in a bright blue flame to form sulfur 4 oxide from the equation sulfur reacting with oxygen will give you sulfur 4 oxide then when it also combined with hydrogen we say here that it reacts with hydrogen at high temperature to form hydrogen sulfide you can see when it reacts with hydrogen it forms what hydrogen sulfide then when this sulfur combines with uh, carbon the carbon we are talking about here is coke when it reacts with coke and uh, or combined with coke in an electric furnace to form it will form a colorless liquid known as carbon 4 sulfide remember that coke is one of the allotropes of carbon one of the allotropes of carbon uh, you know allotropes of carbon we have diamond we have graphite coke is one of them and uh, when this coke react with um, sulfur it will form carbon 4 sulfide now number three number two number two chemical properties of sulfur action of oxidizing acid so this uh, sulfur is oxidized when warmed with concentrated tetrosis of acid acid to form sulfur 4 oxide this tetrosis of acid acid is an oxidizing agent and when it reacts with sulfur it will oxidize the what the sulfur forming what we call sulfur 4 oxide then lastly action of hot concentrated alkali so when sulfur reacts with hot concentrated alkaline solution uh, uh, it will form uh, a mixture that contains sulfides and triosulfate 4 so sulfur reacting with uh, alkali solution will give us sulfide and uh, triosulfate what 4 as a so tree now lastly let's uh, consider uses of sulfur uses of sulfur sulfur can be used uh, in many ways can be used in the production of matches can be used in, in fireworks and uh, gunpowder uh, and gunpowder also it is used in the production of tetraosyl sulfate uh, 6 acid it is used in the production of tetraosyl sulfate 6 acid and then another thing it can be used for in vulcanization of rubber in vulcanization of rubber so what we mean by that is a soft sticky natural rubber can be made to be tougher when you introduce uh, uh, introduce uh, sulfur into it so less plastic more durable form by heating with what sulfur what we are trying to say here is that when you introduce this sulfur into natural rubber it will make that plastic more durable and uh, more useful to you because of the presence of uh, sulfur then we have number four sulfur is used to manufacture the bleaching agent used in pulp and paper industry if you go to where they are producing paper so after mixing the paper you know they think have one color or the other 
then if you add sulfur it serves as a bleaching agent and will remove those dead sea color that colored your paper now number five is that it's used in the preparation uh, in preparing fungicides and insecticides this one now sulfur can serve as uh, one of the raw materials you use in producing your fungicide and insecticide then lastly sulfur is used for the production of carbon 4 sulfide skin ointments and uh, dyes so these are the uses of uh, sulfur now to recap what we discussed uh, in our study uh, focus or lesson focus we treated sulfur as an element we treated uh, allotropes of sulfur we spoke on properties of rhombic and monoclinic sulfur and we considered also chemical properties of sulfur and the last one was the uses of uh, sulfur thank you for your time god bless you